How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our next episode on how to program JavaScript. Now in this episode, I'm going to talk about something called conditional statements within JavaScript. And this is something we use quite often in any kind of JavaScript application we might create inside our code. So the basics of a conditional statement is that we can take a block of code and only run it if a certain condition has been met. And this is what a conditional statement is. So the way we can create them, and by the way, there's three different kinds we're going to talk about in this episode. The first one is going to be what we call an if statement. So we can create an if statement by saying we have if parentheses, curly brackets, and then inside the curly brackets, we add the code that we want to execute inside the website if the condition is true. So we can do anything from just running one line of code to running a huge chunk of code if we want to. So for this example, I'm just going to run one line of code, which is going to be a console log. So I'm going to say console dot log parentheses curly bracket not curly bracket semicolon and then inside the console log I'm going to go ahead and say well I'm just going to write out uh, if because this is a if statement. So what I can do is inside the parentheses say I want some kind of condition to be true or false before we run this code inside the website. So what I can do, as you can see, we do have two variables up here, one called x that is equal to 10, and one called y that is equal to 50. So inside the if statement, inside the parentheses, I can go ahead and use a operator called a, a comparison operator to compare x to something else to see if it's true or not. So what I can do is I can say we have x, and if x is equal to 10, then I want to run this inside the browser. Now, we did talk about assignment operators in two episodes ago, I believe, where we talked about it being a equal sign. So we say x is equal to 10, which is assigning it a value. When we want to check if they're equal to each other, then we use two equal signs inside uh, our condition here, because we can't just use one, because then we're assigning x equal to 10, which doesn't make sense. So we need to use two. Now we can also go ahead and check if x is not equal to 10 by writing exclamation mark instead of the equal sign, which is again, just the opposite. So let's go ahead and just use the first example here. We say, is x in fact equal to 10 and see what happens inside the browser. If we were to go inside the browser, you can see that it says if inside the, the console, because right now the first statement here is in fact true. So it's going to print out if inside the console. So if we were to change x to something like 20, then x is not going to be equal to 10. So if we were to go inside the browser, refresh, then you can see we have nothing inside the console. So this is how we can do one specific condition. Now, what if I want to check for more than just one condition inside the if statement? Well, we can do that as well using something called a logical operator. Now, when it comes to logical operators, we have three different kinds. We have the one that we talked about, a few seconds ago where we just added a exclamation mark. This is in fact a logical operator because we're checking if they're not equal to each other. Now we can also go ahead and say we want to add another condition, which is also a logical operator. And what we want to do is we want to check is x equal to 10 or is something else equal to something else. So we can do that by writing the pipe symbol and adding two of them. It's going to be on the keyboard somewhere and it's one of those buttons that are kind of kind of hard to find on your keyboard. So if you can't find it, try to look up on Google where you can find it. It's called the pipe symbol. So you can go ahead and check it out on Google if you want to. So what we can do is we can also say is y less than 20. And by doing this, we're saying that one of these has to be true in order for this code to run inside the browser. Now, right now, x is not going to be equal to 10 because it's equal to 20, and y is not going to be less than 20 because it's equal to 50. So just to test this out inside the browser, let's actually go ahead and change x and set it equal to 10. So one of them will at least be true. So right now, if we were to go inside the browser, you can see that we still have the if statement showing inside the console here because one of them is in fact true. Now, if I want to check if both of them has to be true, then we can go ahead and switch out the pipe symbol with an ampersand symbol or two of them in fact. So right now we're checking is x equal to 10 and y less than 20 because right now it's going to be false because one of them is not going to be true. So what I can do is I'm going to change y up here to 10 so that inside the browser we now get if because now both of them is in fact true. 
So this is how we can use these specific uh, logical operators inside our code. Now, what if I want to do something if this condition down here fails? Like, for example, running a alternate piece of code, then we can go ahead and do that as well. So right now, if one of these were to change, so we say is y lesser than 20, I'm just going to change y back to 50, because right now this is not going to be true inside the browser. So if we were to go ahead and refresh it, you can see that it's false. So what I can do instead is I can run something called an else statement. Now an else statement is not going to have a condition using parentheses. It's just going to be else and then curly brackets because it's just going to run this code if the condition before it does not uh, has not been met. So right now we can go and console log. And again, we could write a bunch of code if we wanted to. I'm just going to console log something simple. So we're going to write else just to know which specific statement we're running inside um, the code here. So right now, if we were to go inside the browser, you can see that we get else inside the condition here, inside the console. So what I can do now is I can go and say, well, what if I want to have another condition? Because right now we just have one if statement in here that checks for a specific condition inside the parentheses. What if I want to add more different outcomes? Well, what I can do is I can add a else if statement by saying else space if parentheses curly brackets just like before and then you can see we have something that's very identical to the if statement except we just have an else in front of the if uh, word inside the statement here so what i can do is I can just go ahead and add another condition inside the parentheses so i can say <laughs> just had a phone call from a salesman. Um, so inside the else if statement, we could, for example, say that we want to write a condition that's called is x greater than, for example, 50. Then go ahead and run whatever's inside the else if statement. So we can go and copy one of the console logs and just paste it in and change it to else if. So one thing that's important about this specific uh, condition checking here is that when you put this inside the browser and the browser loads the code, it's going to start at the top, meaning that it's going to check the if statement first. And if the if statement is true, then it's going to ignore everything else below it because it has already met one condition that is true. Now, if it were to be false and it's going to continue to the next one, then again, if this one is going to be true, then it's going to ignore whatever is below the specific condition and just go ahead and run that specific condition inside the browser. So the order that you put these condition in are going to be important depending on the application that you're building, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to mention here is the fact that we can in fact add many of these behind each other if you want to. So if I want to have more conditions in between these statements here, I can just go ahead and copy the else if statement and paste it in one more time. And I can do that as many times as I want in order to get as many conditions as I want inside this specific block of conditions here. Another thing that's also important to mention is the fact that right now you can see that I did actually put the else if statement and the else statement right after the last curly bracket from the previous statement. We can also, if you want to, put it like this inside our code and it's not going to break anything. But because this works sort of as a unit that is taken for these conditions um, and they're sort of belonging to each other, it is a habit inside JavaScript that we put them like this after each other inside the code, just to give you a tip on proper coding habits here. Um, so in this last example, I went and changed a bunch of things inside the code just to make it a bit more exciting. So as you can see, we have two new variables. We have one called gender and one called age. And the gender is equal to a string, not a number. And this is just to show that we can use any kind of data type inside our conditions. We don't just need to use numbers because I used all numbers in the last example here. Um, so what I did is I created a piece of code that went ahead and checked if the gender is equal to male or female and how old the person is when they enter the website. So what we can do is, first of all, it's going to check is the gender equal to male. If it is, it's going to check if the age is greater than or equal to 18. If the person is, in fact, greater than 18 or equal to, then it's going to console lock you are a, and then the name of the gender, which is male and above the age limit. Else, if the person is below 18, it's going to console lock, sorry, dude. And it's going to do the same thing for the women inside the website. 
So below here is going to check if the gender is female and then afterwards if the person is above 18 or equal to 18. And then it's going to say again you are a female and above the age limit or else sorry lady and you can't enter the website or, or whatever you might want to do inside the website. Um, and then I created a last else statement because it's just a good habit to have an else statement in case something goes wrong inside uh, the condition that just write something default inside the website. So right now it's saying can't figure out your gender. And I know there's all the memes about being many different types of genders, uh, but in this example it is just two genders inside the website. So, um, so this is just to show that we have you know, we can do all sorts of things with these conditions here. One thing I want to point out is that did in fact create a greater than or equal to, which is another type of comparison operator, which we didn't talk about, I do think, in this episode. Um, now, just to mention the last few comparison operators we have inside when it comes to conditions, I'm just going to show them really quick. Uh, we have the one that we talked about previously, which is equal to. So right now we're checking, is the age equal to 18? And right now it would actually be false, so this actually changed it to... 18, which means that right now it would actually return as true. But what we can also do is we can go ahead and check is it equal to 18 and is it equal to the same data type. So right now age is in fact equal to 18, but what if I were to change it into a string, but it's still going to be 18, but not an integer data type. So right now age is still going to be true because we're just checking if the number is the same, but if I also want to check for the data type, then I add a third equal sign because now it's going to check these two for data type and number which means that right now it's going to be false so this is how we can do this specific thing and again if you want to check if it's not equal to then we just replace the first equal sign with an exclamation mark which we talked about with the logical operators um, and besides that we just have the you know lesser than or equal to greater than or equal to and so on and so on and so on so so this is pretty much what I want to talk about when it comes to conditional statements within JavaScript. Now, there was quite a lot of information in this episode, so don't worry about it if you can't remember everything about conditional statements. We will get more into it in later episodes when we start using uh, what we learned in actual projects using JavaScript. So don't worry too much about it if you can't remember everything in this video. It was quite a long video because I decided to cram everything into one video instead of creating a bunch of small videos. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.